spring from the old 1964 C10 Chevy. Cut up, dirt bike, motorcycle chain. I did my best to wire brush it clean with all the rust. Yeah, you can soak it in kerosene, I'm not doing that. So we're just gonna wing it with that. The smiley face piece of spring seal I'm gonna put in the forge and straighten it out and then sand it up nice and clean and weld these all together because I'm not really too sure about the metal content on the chain, but I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna weld it, straighten this out and put that on the end and then weld all that together, get it hot, put it in the press. But the edge, the blade edge will be the spring steel because I know what that is. I know that would be a good edge steel, but this will be all the, the crazy Damascus part into it. And then when I'm done forging a billet on this, I'm gonna forge the knife, I'm going to drill two holes in the blade where the holes are here on the chain and loop it, swoop it and pull it, no, just loop it, and then put pins through the chain, through the blade billet, and this will be the, the chain will actually be the, uh, the handle of the knife, and then the, the rest of the blade will be uh, the, the billet. I saw a guy on YouTube do this, I think he's from Russia or something like that, did a really awesome job. I have that in my head. So I'm just going to wing it and go from, from what I watched on that years ago to this. And we're going to wing it right now.
All right, so where I am right now is I took the chain billet and put it on the grinder and shaped it. And it's basically a, a tanto, that billet. I have two billets, this is one of the billets. The other billet's not forged and grinded yet to that profile, this one is. So then I got some spare chain and I'm gonna leave that looking like chain for the handle. And the blade, which is the billet of the chain, I'm gonna etch in acid to maybe bring out some of the, the linkage in the, in the billet. Um, I put two pins, get closer here. So I put two pins, they're basically all the way through. I'm gonna grind off or cut off the excess here. And then I tack welded the shape that I want. So I just put a couple tack welds on the chain to hold that handle shape for me. And there's the Tonto blade. Profile's pretty good on that. Um, you can kind of see uh, like the chain, smoosh chain in there. And remember, the uh, the bottom right here where the blade is is actually the um, spring steel, the coil spring. So the bottom, the blade is the coil spring, and then just above it is all of the smooshed chain. Catch that, it's a really thick spine, look at that. I just wanted it to be beefy, you know. Grind it, it's not gonna be the prettiest with the wheel tack welds, but it'll add a little extra support. I might throw, I kinda wanna leave it the chain thing, but I don't want it to, to fall apart either. So I'm probably gonna, I don't know, maybe I'm, I might put it in the press, because the press has the rounding die, and just press it really lightly on that. Um, and then I'll grind these off and peen them. And maybe you throw a little bit of weld in there too. I just want it to be strong. Uh, straighten out the blade a little bit, even though that is pretty, where's the camera? It's pretty damn spite. It's got a little bit of wobble in there. The spine is super duper thick and that's straight as an arrow. So I'm almost done. Almost there. Grind it, polish it, etch it. Grind it, polish it, etch it. Um, I gotta heat treat it too, which, once I get the handle to where I want it to be and everything looks good, I'm probably just gonna heat up the blade and quench it in oil just along the blade and call it that a day. Almost like a moon. So that's kind of cool. Bike chain, Tonto, knife. I got it hot and I crushed it in the press. Um, I did not forge well this. I feel like if I did that, the handle would be thinner. It would be almost like the, the thickness of one chain. I said I wanted the double. It, it would basically press the top chain and the bottom chain together into one chain thickness. I, I wanted it two chain thickness, so I, I didn't really want to forge weld it, so I just tack weld it. That's ugly, you know, because you have the, the pins from the actual chain, and then you just have some random. I could have probably could have strategically hid those a little better. Um, I can get them with the Drevel, whatever, but they're going to add strength to it. And, I mean, is it the prettiest bike chain knife? No. Because that Russian dude that's got the one where he puts the, puts the 
the chain billets and the kerosene. I watched that, so it gave me the idea to do this. He's awesome. This is my, and he's, he's, he's done a bunch of videos with, with chains. This is my first time uh, doing this, and I think it's not bad considering I did successfully do that. I haven't etched it yet. This has still got to be uh, furic acid etched and polished, but you can see the pattern in there. And then the, the blade is the, uh, the truck coil spring. So that, that worked, that worked good. Um, it's quenched, hardened, tempered. She's buffed up right now. She's ready for the etch, basically. Um, then I'll polish it up, put up, put the wire wheel on the, the handle part. I mean, the only, I like how thick the spine is. The only thing I, I, I don't like is, you know, the, that you see the tack welding on the handle. But is that a deal breaker for me? I, me personally, no. I don't think it is. Um, you can still see the, you know, that part of the chain. I, I didn't want to fill all that in with weld. You know, I still want it to look like a chain. Still does on the profile too. Just, just a couple of little tack welds, and that's just for strength. I tried. This thing is not going to bend. It's tough. I like the length on it. It's a, it's a good size knife. It's thick. It's got some weight to it. It's unique. It's got that goddamn bike chain handle. Still got to edge it. Big old thick spine. This is my first time doing this. Bike chain. Right. Bike chain knife is in there from the blade down, wired in, um, etching right now. Alrighty. So, just took it out of the Furic Acid Etch. And this is the coffee etch. I put my coffee in a sheet pan. And I put it on the wood stove and heat it up uh, and then put it back on my swage block stand uh, to chill out cool it's actually on the cooling side now and I'm gonna leave it in here overnight for like at least 24 hours or longer just let that coffee etch in there I'm not worried about the handle being ruined sometimes you wouldn't want to do that with the coffee with epoxy and a wooden handle it might kind of ruin that but this is all metal so we're just gonna etch the whole thing Leave it in there and try to get the darkest we can get it to possibly be. But here's a little preview. You can see the chain. You see the bottom where the uh, the blade edges, not the very bottom, like right there. That's where the coffee's kind of like sticking. But the bottom part is darker, like a centimeter. That's the uh, the coil spring for the blade. And everything above that is the, uh, the bike chain. So I can't wait for the coffee. It's going to bring out the pattern a little more. And uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool. the chain handle pretty cool I don't know it's my first one it's not too it's not too bad it's not the greatest but it's not the worst it's big I, I dig it I think it's cool all right back in that coffee take a bath I'm gonna leave that in there overnight Working on some just real simple cable cable knives. Just gotta clean these up a little bit. Just these little boogers. Got two of them there. Gotta dremel some of the wire right there. You don't want to poke yourself. I got some more of that cable too. Probably doing some more of those. Clean slate forge. Yep. It's a mess in here. It's been busy. Getting ready for that blade show. Got some bike chain there. Got this big purple monster. Gotta polish that up. Working on the handle. I bought a new cool drubble attachment. This long lanky thing here. With an end, a little smaller piece to get in the nooks and crannies. I really dig this. I got it for 20 bucks at Lowe's. I'm pretty happy about that. 
Uh, I got my rasp file knife, just cleaning that up for the blade show. I got my sparkly maple burl uh, Damascus knife up in here. And up here I got some miscellaneous knives that I'm working on. Um, so this one, I forged from a rasp file a while ago. It's a beauty. Look at the handle material on that. It's absolutely beautiful handle material. Rasp file. This is killer. I love the rasp file knives. They're still killer. Uh, got our railroad spike knife in here, forged with 1084. Kydex sheath. Viking rasp file. This is sax. Viking sax. And this is a Damascus tiger wood. And this is a, um, a rasp file. Another Viking sax. Pineapple twist. Railroad spike knife. I got the Screehaw, I call it, the eagle with the thumb, uh, deer antler for the eagle head, brass, Damascus, don't even ask me, I don't even know, I just did it for the fun of it. And I got this real micro, micro mini um, brass file knife, it'd be cool for like a box cutter, you know, hit the thumb grip right here, if you had a, open boxes all day as a job. Um, I had a job like that. I would have loved one of these little custom box cutters. So. Damascus billets. Get three of those. Still got to stack them or just forge them out. Haven't decided yet. I got a lot of miscellaneous stuff that I'm still working on. I even forged a cat out of a piece of mild steel. Would you look at that? Just look at it. Just look at it. It's abstract. It's art. It's cool. Um, yeah. Cool.